Welcome all to Mind Mesh. My name's Chayton. And I'm Fish. And you know what I'm actually thinking about now in my head about what we're going to be talking about? Because this is the podcast all about internet rabbit holes, uh, those shower thoughts. Because, you know, we, we're just interested in that stuff. But I was thinking about it. So last episode, of course, we had coffee on. Yeah. And then the episode before that, of course, was our Christmas slash New Year special with good old Elijah. And I just, just realized us. in, yeah, no, literally we've been talking about this episode like the last episode never happened. So literally last episode was the first episode of the new year of the new year. And we didn't even mention it. Yeah, we did. Did we? I think we did a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. In the very beginning we did mention it. Yeah. I it completely, I completely forgot about that episode. I don't know. <laughs> I don't just know slipped why. your mind? Yeah, just like literally. When I keep saying literally, but when I uh, when I was going through the episodes to make sure I was setting everything up properly, I found that episode with coffee, and it it just it, it just clicked in my mind. Even though that was like thirty minutes ago, I don't even know why. I don't even know. I I can't even explain it in all honesty. But uh, so that I uh, yeah, that kind of messes up our topic because well, our topic is all about the New Year's. Well, since since we uh, since we've kind of passed that time, we do have our first viewer submitted. Well, yeah. Well, let's do a little bit of New Year's because we just mentioned it. Bit. Might as well. Might well, as well. I mean, it's one of those things. Like, it's still what the it's it be the second full week of the New Year's because New Year's falls on like it fell on a Wednesday. Yeah. So it this it's it's been two and a half weeks into the New Year's. So now that we've really thought about it, we can talk about our New Year's resolutions and just what we expect to happen to us in our lives in the new year. Well, we're both graduating yeah, college. Yeah, no, that's, that's the big thing. It's like, this is our final semester. We're graduating from film school and we're, we're getting boot out, booted out into the real world and being, basically being like, it's your job now. It's time to time to find film work. Yeah, it's time to find film work. It's time to find your place in this uh this crazy industry. And uh and it's oh, yeah, quite all, scary. All those uh, other adult things that you were probably should have been taught that you weren't taught that now you gotta figure out on your oh, own. Oh yeah. Taxes and Taxes, you know, like um, identity theft. How I, how to rent a house. Yeah, how how to rent a house, how to own a house. Uh just you know, it's basically all financial stuff, really. Yeah. That's that's the main thing about adulthood is that I saw this uh it was a meme the other day and it basically stated that um all these taxes and stuff are like a a pay to play for adulthood and that childhood that. yeah and that childhood was just a free trial and I was just like man that's really that hit me deep in my soul like <laughs> I don't know it, it, it is kind of perplexing to me just the idea cuz it's like well I, it's also like it what perplexes me is just the fact that we don't ever truly get taught it we most most to everybody is just thrown out to the wind to like figure it out yeah and then like it is it's almost like a rite of passage for adulthood in a sense yeah it's like you got to figure this stuff out real quick or you just can't function in normal society exactly but what i was more talking about is like the the fact that with us graduating like soon in all honesty it's, yeah. it's gonna be fairly soon when we graduate it's just for me I mean, I've been in school now for before you sixteen years. Oh, all, yeah, all, all of school. So sixteen years of school—that's all I've done. Of course, I've had a job. I've had to like pay off credit cards and bills and and that sort of stuff. I've had to pay off bigger payments. Like I, yeah. I know the whole interest rate nonsense that happens and all that. But it's just like it—I don't know. It's just—it's a weird mentality to kind of be in to to realize that you're. Well, to tie this in, it's like your New Year's resolution aren't based off of like, oh, I want to make sure I get good grades in school this year. That's that can't yeah. be a New Year's resolution anymore. It's like, oh, I want to find a high paying job and get settled down somewhere so that way I can feel like capable about living life. Just want to be able to like eat and get like pay my rent, bro. Yeah, no, that's literally it. that's that's we've gotten to the point where our New Year's resolution can't be about minuscule little things like oh, I want to get an A in history this this year. Or like, I want to pass this uh, this year with a 4.0 GPA. It's like, oh, I want uh, this I, year I, my I New hope, Year's resolution. I hope I pass these next classes in the next six months so I can get out on time. Yeah, but no. besides that. Yeah, but besides that, it's like, oh, my New Year's resolution is to have a house rented or a house like payment type deal. Or like, 
just to be stable in a sense. And I, I guess that's my my main New Year's resolution. Is like I know I'm not going to be stable after this year, but I want a sense of stability. No, completely. That's I think that's something both well, think, of us can agree yeah, on. Yeah, no, that's just like it's a major thing, especially with like how the industry that we're going into works. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where it's very up in the air. It's I up mean, in the air, and something too that a lot of people get caught up in, which I mean, I don't know. People get caught up in like, or people I know here in school get caught up on like getting scared of being in like an office job. Oh yeah, there, no. like editing well, for it, some. Well, random it's also company. one of those things like an office job is kind of like that's where a lot of people start. A lot of people start being like a restaurant or a waitress or a waiter or a bar hop. Yeah, and stuff like, that. like a lot of people, especially in L.A., like that's where they start, and they like they start working little PA jobs. They start walking working internship jobs, just impressing people. And uh, they slowly but surely make their way. Yeah. And th- I'm going to tie this into something that uh, we said that we were going to say because um, something that happened to us recently. But uh, the we, we, of course, go to film school and we were in a class called film business that teaches oh, yeah. you all about just film business, the way that money works in film and how to raise funds and how theater runs work and yada, yada, yada. Distribution. Yeah, distribution. Uh, interest uh, marketing yeah marketing all that nonsense and super late into the semester our teacher just comes in and is standing there and she's like you know I really don't know what to tell you guys anymore I'm very depressed for you yeah I'm very depressed for you because I feel like what I'm teaching you is just gonna lead you to a dead end it's just gonna be a straight disaster because the industry that you're going into is ever changing and it's getting tougher and tougher to get into and I'm just worried. What's because, the percentage that she said at the very beginning of the year of how oh, many films how many, actually get made that are oh that are profitable or yeah, it was I don't even remember. It was low. It, it was, was like, like below, 20%. Yeah, it was like 20 percent or lower of films that actually are profitable when they like get to the finish line. But like that's I actually I think I, I, I here. Let's see. I'm going to do something real quick. Because I know it's in my notes. Because it's like the the very first note that I wrote down for that that uh that session. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I feel like I'm leading you down a path of destruction. That's exactly what our professor said to us. Like the first thing that they said to us walking into our film business class. <sighs> and it's just like New Year's resolution is like I don't want it to be a path of destruction. I want to get into the industry. <laughs> I mean, I think the the upside for me and you at least is that. I think the hardest thing going into the film industry is going in as a writer or a director. Oh yeah, or, we're or, kind or of an actor, but like yeah, no. For us, it's kind of we're we're in the we're in the production and post production side of things. So it's like we don't really need to pitch things. We just want to get on to the said projects. <laughs> yeah, no. So it's like for for you wanting to be a cinematographer, like yeah, you're gonna start as like a PA for actors or the director to yeah. go get coffee and stuff like that, but then you'll work up to be a grip and then you'll slowly just start working up until you get the cinematography. But you can get on a set at any time. Yeah. You can literally, you can just ask to be on, you can find a set. Like there's so many sets that like just are here in our town that you can work on and that yeah, type of deal. You can find, you can just, like you said, get local PA jobs yeah, and, it's and the, then work your way and up. And it's the same for me. It's like I can go get a local PA job and then slowly work my way up into the company until I get an editing position that I'm looking for. Or you can intern at like a yeah. small editing house and yeah, then work. No, exactly. There. And it's it's just one of those things where like the positions that we're in are slightly better than the the jobs where you're a director or a writer or even a producer. Oh yeah, where like you're the jobs a- where you're literally having to pitch your product and who you are and why they should pick you. And trying to get million like people to invest millions yeah, of dollars. Millions of dollars in, into a project. And it's it, it just I mean, it just feels impossible, especially at this level. Like how do you even start? Yeah. But with that being said, um, we, uh, this podcast has been going for a little bit, sort of kind of, I mean, let's see, four months, five months. I don't even know. I, I can't even count. I'm trying to think when we even started. It wasn't in September. I think it was mid September. Yeah. So or no, it was late September, late September. So let's see, October, November, December, almost two January, four months. So this podcast has been going for about four months. You know, we're, we're hitting episode. This is 17, I think. Is it 17? Yeah. 17. Wild. It's a weird time, but um, I would just like to say, uh, hey, Steve. 
Oh, hey, Steve. Yeah, we finally told our professors that we, well, we, we make we a didn't podcast. Just, well, we didn't yeah. just tell our professors. We had to... Uh, yeah, no, we are both in this class called uh, Non-Narrative. And Non-Narrative is basically uh, a class where instead of telling narrative-based films, you make non-narrative ones. So stuff like music videos, uh, commercials, non-profit videos of, about non-profit organizations, documentaries, documentaries. Uh, experimental videos, and stuff like that. So... One of these video projects was for a electronic press kit or an EPK. And of course, uh, most of the class decided they were going to do musicians, which I, actually I think everyone did except for like two people who did. Because yeah. it was either you did an EPK or you did a nonprofit video. And like two people did nonprofit and then the rest of our class did EPKs. And I decided, you know what? I'm not going to do one over a musician or anything like that. He did it over us. Yeah, I did an I did an electronic press kit for our podcast, and then we got to show it and screen it in front of our entire school, yes. basically. At the end of the semester, we... Yeah, we showed it off, and then we had a little, reci- a little reception, reception afterward with a bunch of snacks and drinks and stuff, and our professors just kept walking out to us, talking how they're going to listen to us. And our one professor, Steve, told us how much he liked podcasts. And yeah. if you've made it this far, Steve, yeah, thank if you. you. If you've managed to listen to all 17 of these episodes and make it, uh, where are we at? 11 minutes into this one. <laughs> hey, <Yeah>. Steve. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm glad you can make it. And yeah. thank you for being an awesome teacher. We'll have to have you as a special guest one day. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that would be a dream. Steve. A true email, dream. Email us if you hear this. <laughs> And he will, you can be, you can be on here. No, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'd be down for that. I'd love to, no, that's the thing is like, getting an older generation or like a professor or someone that's been in the industry and just also in a completely different field because Steve's a writing professor. Oh yeah, he's a screenwriter. But another one that we're talking about is just a more difficult position to really get yeah, into. Yeah, no, so it, that, the, it also adds just a, such a unique perspective of getting someone outside of our age or age. That is going. That has been in the industry that we want to be in. Yeah, and it's just like the it's just the whole experience type deal. Like it would actually be really interesting. To oh yeah, to no him. for Dude's sure. It's just also a fucking goof, and I love him. Yeah, no, it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> what was I? But so uh, we've completely gone off the rails with the whole New Year's thing. Oh but, yeah, we like, just started talking about a teacher. Yeah, no, just talking about school and stuff like that. But. No, I'm trying to think besides stability, what I would really want, like, New Year's to be. Because, like, my New Year's resolution this year was uh, just to better myself and to get myself to, like, a happier place just mentally and physically. And That's I, I kind of what I'm wanting mine. I feel like I had a pretty rough year yeah, in no. that regard. I felt like I lost a lot of weight. You know that. Yeah. So I. Feel I mean, like, I'm in the same boat, but for a complete. Like, well, you you lost it in a healthy way. I, I don't know if like, I would say healthy. I don't even think I've talked about that on the pod. Have I talked about that on the podcast? I don't know. I feel like I was going to well, talk were, about it. But you did like intermittent fasting and stuff. Yeah, I did. Right? Yeah, I did intermittent fasting. Probably not in the most healthy, like the healthiest way of intermittent fasting, but like. Uh, it was either one year ago or two years ago after New Year's. I, I remember coming back here to school and I remember like just looking in the mirror at myself and just being like, yeah, I'm not happy with myself. I need to change this. And then I went on my whole intermittent fasting thing and then, you know, you drop 80, 90 pounds and that that's that. Yeah. I'm still not happy with myself just because it's like. I mean, everybody has problems. Well, yeah, every, like, every, everyone has like body dysmorphia in a sense. Every, everyone has, everyone sees flaws in themselves that they want to fix. Be it just mentally, be it emotionally, or be it physically. Like everyone yeah. sees flaws in themselves, and I, I think that's always, that's always a very well. I mean, it's the same thing as like, oh, everyone has the New Year's resolution of going to the gym. Let's see how long that lasts. Like, let's see how long that Planet Fitness subscription goes. Yada yada yeah. yada. It, it's one of those things where it's like. Everyone sees flaws and everyone wants them to get better for New Year's. I think that's like not even a question. It's just the sense of like, are you willing to push yourself to to hit that point? Or it, it's will a you willing ju- to push yourself. And some people don't realize like just the situation they're in, like like the gym thing. I I tried to do that this semester. Oh yeah, like the situation that I'm in, just like with classes, like the way my schedule worked out. And then it was just, it it was taking too much time and time and energy. Like I, I'd have so much homework to do, but I'd get back from the gym and literally just want to go to bed and I would, I would do, I wouldn't get shit done or I would. Well, that was also a major problem is that because of 
the schedule. Gosh, sorry, I'm like having the hiccups over here. But because of like the uh, the schedule that you guys had, and the fact that you guys were a big group going to the gym, you guys were going at like nine p.m. at night. Yeah, which like isn't really all that healthy for you because that gets you like blood pumping and your adrenaline going, and then you're gonna makes it harder to sleep too. Yeah, no, you're you're gonna come back and take like a cold shower to like cool yourself off, and then that's just gonna wake you up more. And then at that point, it's already eleven o'clock, and you're wide awake because you're 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 Hearts pumping blood all throughout your body super fast. And it's just like, so it wasn't, it wasn't good in the long run, but it's also like, it wasn't good just timing wise. Yeah, no, it I would, mean, if I, cause like I enjoyed working out and I felt, I did feel good after working out. It was just, but it just, I couldn't fit it into my schedule with the, and like maintain everything. Yeah. Which I mean, we were talking about this before, but that's, that's your other main resolution is oh, time yeah. management. Yes. Cause I, I am a bad procrastinator. You? Yes. A bad procrastinator? What are you, what? <laughs> I'm terrible at procrastinating and just need to get better at that. And it's mainly just school shit. Cause what? Like, okay. I was literally about to say, I was like, it's not, I was like, it's not even school stuff. Like sometimes. Like what? Yeah, I mean, you, you procrastinate a lot. Just about anything really. That's fair. <laughs> well, I can't. It, I can't give you like an exact example because it's like. Well I, well, I mean, I know a good one is like when we record. I don't even mean to. I will just dilly dally around before we record and like somehow kill thirty minutes sitting around before we record, eating a snack or doing or like, gre- like making a drink and talking to Chayton about nonsense, and then Chayton's just sitting here, not really responding, because he's ready to record, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not like, getting the hint. I want to save all these juicy talking points for the podcast type deal. No, I mean, it, it, I guess it's one of those things. I would say it's less about time management for you, and more about uh, distracting yourself less. I I would say that would be the key, because... Already, you had like five or six things you needed to you needed to do today before we sat down and and recorded. And I I can't count the amount of times that I just w- walked into your room, saw you working on what you need to work on, and then instantly changed the YouTube and like would watch just watch it. Stars. Yeah, just randomly watch a video. And <laughs> I was just like, this boy literally was just turned around five seconds ago, telling me how he needed to get this done. And he turns around and switches it instantly to watch YouTube rips of Pawn Stars. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's less of a time management thing and more of like not distracting yourself. See, I just like having things on the background while I work. And I, I, I had it good the other day where I still have my TV. Oh yeah. Where you like did a dual monitors S thing. For yeah. Your laptop and the TV. Cause that's what you do a lot. You'll have, cause since you have like a, three monitors set up, you'll put a, you'll put a YouTube tab open while you work. Yeah. And I, I'm this, I'm a similar. I've also, I've thought about not doing three monitors anymore. Really? Yeah. I've thought about just doing like two 4Ks and just rocking that because like it's a lot of real estate and honestly what I'm doing, like my job. Yeah. Like I find that I, I distract myself because I'll be using two monitors for editing, but then on my third monitor, I'll have YouTube, Netflix or something up, like just watching something while I'm working, which is just, it's detrimental to my time management. It's just a, it's just a distraction. That's fair. And I've really thought about just switching back to only having two monitors or, or getting a new monitor to replace my super old monitors that just are terrible in all honesty. I don't, I don't think I've actually seen you. Use all three at once. I I mean I typically don't. That's that's my thing. Is like in in, in all honesty, like I'll use the way I have my monitor set up. I have my main monitor, which is the one I always have like the main program on, and then my left side monitor has like the file browser of the software open, and then the Windows okay. file so- browser software open. That way I can scroll through and find whatever files I need. And drag them into like yeah. Premiere and whatnot. Yeah. And then on my far right screen, it's just open space. Like, I mean, I'll have panels open. Like if I'm having to do color correction or if I'm having to add graphics and text and stuff like that, I'll yeah. put all those panels on my right side. But for the most part, that the, that's a my, YouTube. Yeah. My, my right side is never, is never utilized fully. And it's just like, well, do I really need this? It truly, yeah, it does. It does take up a lot of. I remember when you only had two monitors. Yeah, no, my my desk was actually usable. 
And now there is literally only... It is just a computer station. Yeah, it is literally just a computer station and a lamp that's, like, tucked in behind everything. There's no room for, like, a little desk organizer for pens and stuff like that. I literally have those in a Ziploc baggie in my desk. Like, there's room for my wallet, keys, my glasses, and maybe a hat if I, like, fold it up. But besides that, there's, like, no real estate on my desk for anything. Ex- oh, and a cup. Yeah, and a few bottles right now. Yeah. Well, that's also because, like, I've cleaned. So it's, like, there's a little bit more space because I don't have my typical, like, computer stuff out and about just, like, clogging up everything. But it's 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 bad. It really is. It's it's that I've thought about going down to two monitors. But the whole reason I have three monitors, and this is why I wanted them in the first place, is because when I used to game a lot, I just loved the idea of having that much field of view oh yeah that would be cool did you so have you ever done that yeah i've done that yeah it's it's really fun except for the sole fact that these are like my side monitors are 1080p my middle one's 4k so like the resolution just gets fucked it has no clue what to do and also the fact that they're different sizes also really screws things up oh okay the fact that my side monitor is like 23 inches and my main one's 27 that that size difference in games it it can't like skew that correctly so it's like not the side monitors if you're looking at the actual bezels the they don't line up it's all it's all kinds of messed up that's so weird yeah no it's it's honestly quite disappointing so i i've thought about going back to the two monitors and you know how i'll i'll pay for a second monitor with this ad break with this ad break look fish i i need i need to know something i need to know have you what? heard yeah you have i'm are maybe. you sure possibly you, you can tell me though have you heard of Anchor? Like the thing that's on like boats? No, 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 no. Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. I'll let you explain. You said you knew um, about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember now. Okay. It's it's free. It's free? Yeah. There's like free. absolutely free. No charge. No charge. Uh-huh. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Wait. Phone. You can just pull out your phone and, and edit your podcast right oh, from it. And that's wild. It. That's absolutely wild. What else does it do? Well, you can distribute your podcast um, or Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. Where? So it can be heard on Spotify, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else. Many more. Wait, so like Google Podcasts and all of those, you can hear it using oh, yeah. Anchor? Oh my, really? What else do they do? You make money from your own podcast with minimum, no minimum listenership. No minimum listenership? Are you yeah, kidding man. me? Yeah, man. You can just make money from making a podcast? Yeah, I didn't man. know you could do that. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Wait, so you're telling me that if, if, if our listeners want to make a podcast, all they have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started and make their own podcast. Yes, that's all they have to do is that's download all they have to do? the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's absolutely wild. What a great steal. What a great steal. Welcome back. Well, now, okay, we've talked about New Year's. We've gotten that out of the way. It's yep, time yep. it's time to go back to our roots. Let's talk about some weird stuff. Let's talk about conspiracy theories. This is our first. Year. This should this should have been like our first episode. This should have been our bread and butter. In all honesty, this literally. I hope you know, guys, that we're becoming a conspiracy theory podcast. podcast. After Hell this. yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. No, so I, I'm going to talk about. We're going to actually go back and forth. But uh, one of my favorite conspiracy theories is the uh, Mandela effect. Yeah, named after uh, Nelson Man- Mandela. And just everyone was confused about when he died. When because they thought he died in prison, right? Yeah, yeah. No, people thought he died in prison in the 1980s when he died in 2013. And no one's like, wait, he's not alive. That's not real. And because of that, like this whole weird conspiracy theory started happening, where everyone just stopped remembering things right. And I just there's so many examples of it too. And like some of these, even I, the Berenstain and Berenstein. yeah, Ber- Berenstain, Berenstein. How to spell Looney Tunes. Wait. Yeah. How do you spell Looney Tunes? Or how uh, do you spell tunes in Looney Tunes? Is it T O O N S? No. Is it Z? It, no, it's T U N E S. Like tunes, like musical tunes. 
No, it's no, it's yeah, not. it is. Yes, it is. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and like, I mean, I'm just gonna go through this list in all honesty. So like, there was never such a thing as Jiffy peanut butter. It's always been just Jiff. I that I wouldn't know. Yeah, no, me neither. But like, I it, it's funny because this website has like all these like made out like the logos and all that stuff. Yeah. And like looking at Jiffy, I'm like, yeah, I recognize that, but I don't remember it ever being on anything. I just remember it being called Jiffy peanut butter, but never being on the logo. People just wanted to add something more to Jiff. Yeah. Uh, people getting confused that Curious George doesn't have a tail. Because, you know, he's a chimpanzee, not a monkey. Somehow people were confusing that. I never thought that. I never thought that either. Yeah, no, I, I, I remember when I first learned about the Mandela effect and just asking a ton of people, like the first one I would lead off with, does Curious George have a tail? The amount of people that said yes is wild. Also, just read, I just read this one and I, I looked up there because I have a ball of this stuff. Febreze doesn't have two E's in it. It's one E. I'll be right back. Yeah, no, okay. Th- that confused you too, right? <laughs> Did you spill it? Just a l- I spill a little bit of soda. Spill a little bit of soda. But no, you can clean up with the Febreze. That's what that stuff is. Um, but yeah, no. I, I'm like, um, there's no way, right? No, that's Pledge. Yeah, there you go. Tell me, does it got one E? Yeah. Yeah, see? It only has one E. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> yeah, we're living in a weird, wacky world. I mean, there's there's a lot of other. It's mainly just misspellings of stuff and like not remembering the logos correctly. Like Oscar Mayer is actually uh wait, it, it's Oscar Mayer, but of course with how the English language works, it's pronounced Oscar Mayer. Oh wow! Yeah, so there's no e in Mayer; it's an a. Uh, Skechers, everyone. Uh, er, there's no t in Skechers. I knew that. Yeah, no, I I, I was reading that was like I've never even thought about that. Um. Of course, good old Fruit Loops. People. I know that's, uh, it's spelled F-R-O-O-T. Yeah, no, apparently people thought it was just fruit and then loops. Almost the reverse of the Looney Tunes Mandela effect. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Wait, King Henry VIII's turkey leg? I have no clue about that one. That one doesn't make any sense. Oh, what was, uh, I feel like there's a m- more bigger ones. Uh, well, uh, a lot of these, like, just cartoons and misspellings, like the Monopoly Man and not having a monocle uh, because they're confusing it with Mr. Peanut from Planter's Peanuts. Uh, people think that Pikachu's tail was reversed. So instead of having the brown little bit at the beginning of the tail and it's just being yellow throughout, it's yellow and then it has a black bit on the end. Apparently people remember that. Huh. Uh, apparently there's, wait, there's no hyphen in between Kit Kat. A lot of people believe that, like, it's literally, all it is is people not recognizing or not remembering logos and brands, basically. Like, it's it's really, it's really crazy, and, God, this list just keeps going on and on. Oh, there's one, here's one that's my favorite, it's Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Uh, wait, no, that line wasn't in Snow, yeah, no, like, Mirror Mirror on the Wall wasn't even in Snow White. That type of deal. Like, it's just a bunch of random ass shit from the Mandela effect that I absolutely what love. Color, what color is C-3PO's legs? I just saw that one. I, I only remember him ever being fully gold. I don't yeah. remember there being a silver leg. Yeah. That you was, a, I, there was an I old video having, I saw and I, I remember was going having back a, it. a red arm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was at one point. But yeah, no, he's always had like a silver leg. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> wow, we went a long time for Mandela effect. Tell us one of your favorite conspiracy theories. Okay, one of my favorite conspiracy theories. You, I, I, swear, I just if asked. If you lead off with the one that I think no, you're I'm about not. to lead off with. I'm okay, not. Yeah. We just talked about it like on our break. Yeah. Where I mentioned it and you said you've never heard of it. It's called MK Ultra. MK Ultra was this project. Uh, All I'm thinking about is Mortal Kombat mixed with <laughs> uh, Killer Instinct for no, whatever reason. It's um, MK Ultra is this project uh, started by the CIA where... I believe, was it during the Cold War? Let me look at it. I just had it pulled up. Um, but essentially, they would use psychoactive drugs, hypnosis, and all these other weird tactics to, and torture to try and um, interrogate people through mind control. That was their ultimate goal. I mean, honestly, okay, here, what's me kinda, okay, here's what's kind of weird to me is that even though that does sound very outlandish, 
I, I could believe that that happened. I think it, I don't know if this was actually, this has actually come out and this was, was true. If yeah. this has happened or if this is still just skeptic. Yeah, mythos type yeah. thing. Yeah. But here, I'll read a little bit from Wikipedia. Yeah. Project MKUltra, also called uh, the CIA Mind Control Program, is a code name given to a program of experiments on human subjects that were, de- uh, that were designed and undertaken by the U.S. Central Intelligence AG- Agency and which were at times illegal. Experiments on humans were intended to identify and develop drugs and procedures to be used in interrogations in order to weaken the individual and force confessions through mind control. Well, you know, here's the thing about that is that you, we know throughout history that things like that have happened. We've done obscene, illegal things to people to try and weaken them. I know, but it's crazy that that people people were just feeding them acid to try and like take over their mind. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, but the thing is, is that that conspiracy is so believable because... That probably could have happened. I think that, that those are the craziest conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah, the, the ones, ones that, that are, are completely believable that can't, oh, yeah. like, be disproven in anything in any way because if that were to happen, of course they would hide that stuff. Of course no one would have survived from that. But... Everyone's dead from that. Or they're under mind control. Yeah, or they're under mind control and they just don't remember. That's That's the wild stuff right there. That's, like... I mean, it sounds like total stoner talk, but I mean, it's still fun to talk about. Oh, okay. If you, if that's I mean, total I mean, stoner talk I mean, our you, whole, I think our whole podcast is probably just stoner talk. Yeah, no. So. Well, I, what I was going to say is like, if that's stoner talk, then what do you consider is, is believing that we live in a simulation similar to the matrix? Is that like acid talk to you? I mean, it's probably still in the rain, realm of, um. Stoner talk, but yeah, I almost another- I almost messaged our our group chat the other day with all of our friends because I was driving and I don't know if it was like I was just tired or if a cloud like passed over like my car in just the perfect way to do this, but like I swear to God I was driving like it was pretty clear skies there was like two or three clouds up there yeah I was just driving and then I sw- I swear like this is some kind of weird ass visual mind trick that my brain pulled on me. But I could have sworn that I saw the sky flicker (laughs) and then the clouds like pop in and out like they were like from the back and just loading forward. Like you were like you were driving and then like you were coming. It was procedurally generated in front of you. Well, no, it was like odd because like the the, I like the way my eyes saw it was like the, the blue sky like got dim and then bright again. Almost like almost similar to the how like when a cloud passes over you, but it's quick. It's like yeah. stuff gets shady and then it comes back up. It was like that, but reversed. So the sky went dark and then went bright again. And then the clouds not from above me and then into the horizon line. It was from the horizon line to above me. Oh, yeah. No. So like I, I just like blinked for a second. I was like, what in the world? And I almost messaged you guys. And I was like, I think we live in a simulation. Like, uh, Elon Musk thinks that we uh, live in a simulation. Hell yeah, Elon Musk. Um, I, I I don't. It was just really weird, and that's why like that's the first thing that popped in my mind when I thought about conspiracies with the whole simulation type deal. I think it's, it's so completely cr- outlandish, but just the fact is my, it though. Look, stop <laughs> it. That's the best part about conspiracies. Is but, the is it though the what if questions? I, but <laughs> the simulation yeah. thing, you just can't you can't know for sure. Like they're. Oh yeah, no, I yeah. Well, that's the well. I mean, that's the like, big thing. Like, like the Mandela people, effect is a conspiracy that it's like, oh, people just aren't remembering things correctly. What the whole uh, MK Ultra nonsense and and living in a simulation. It's like, what? Well, how can you? What kind of? What blame could you put to make like, that? Like one, I feel like. Well, let me let me look this up so we know for sure. I'm gonna look up if if that actually happened. You know, so it's like one of those things where like a lot of... The, Google the, will tell me the truth. Yeah, Google will tell you the truth. Uh, For me, conspiracies are the strongest when they aren't able to be easily... Uh, I'm trying to think. When the blame cannot be shifted to something easy for a conspiracy. So like the Mandela effect is a weaker conspiracy because people can just blame it on people's forgetful memory. Or like people's altered memory. Because the more, like, you tell a story about uh, a childhood or, like, an event that's happened, the more it changes because the more you exaggerate about it and the yes, more you it forget. Yes, it was real. It was real? Yes. Oh, so no, it was not a conspiracy no more. No. 
A rest that, in peace. <laughs> so I guess that really doesn't fit in with our topic, but I mean, no, it's still it's something well, I mean, crazy. But the, as I was saying, it's like the best conspiracies are the ones that you can't easily blame on other things. So like the whole living in a simulation, it's like, what could you easily blame that on? I think people, from what I've heard, like with that conspiracy, it's like, they're saying that, like, the way technology is going now, we'll eventually get to that point of simulation. That what, what if the point, what if we're already in it? Yeah, and then we just make a simulation of a simulation. Yeah, and it's just down the rabbit hole. It's kind of it's like uh, that one Rick and Morty episode with the car battery. Oh yeah, where they go into that car battery and then they make a w- tiny world that yeah. powers their world and then yeah. it keeps going. Yeah, it just goes and goes and goes and goes and it's just like, well, wait a second, <laughs> but. No, it's shit's crazy to think Look, about. Okay, I understand. I'm just I'm delaying the inevitable. I know there's one more conspiracy you really you really want to talk about because this one this one's the most recent. You it's guys, it's the most recent. But there's also uh, like I feel like because we're we're kind of pre-recording this at the beginning of 2020. It's like more stuff might come out. Yeah, about more it. stuff might come out by the time this episode comes out. We might just sound like crazy people. Well, because like what was it? It was. It was recently that, like, the, the two guards okay, that were supposed to be... We're talking about Jeffrey Epstein, by Bro, the way. Bro, you can't just say it like that. <laughs> no, but wasn't it recently the two guards that were, like, guarding that, his cell all, just got arrested yeah. or something like that? So it's like, at so this point... So there's probably like, more that's going to come out about it. So it's this is probably also not a conspiracy theory. Yeah, no, I was like... The Epstein more people, didn't kill himself. I mean, it should be fucking obvious. Yeah, no, at this point, it's literally not even a conspiracy like there are people, actual skeptics, not like people, not like Alex Jones, but like people that are actual skeptics saying like, no, this, this is fishy. Both of the cameras didn't work. That's weird. Yeah. No people that are thinking it's, fi- I, I don't know. Just the fact that like the cameras weren't working, the guards have been arrested. Like the cellmate, the cellmate wasn't in there. Yeah. No, it's just, it all doesn't line up to like, it just doesn't line up. Yeah. Like and it's it's this fucking is, crazy. This is another conspiracy that I believe will become truth. And that's what I'm saying. That's what we're spraying. And that's all we're that's all we're playing, you know? That's how this goes. Welcome to Mind Mesh. <laughs> <laughs> what God damn it. Man, what uh and now I'm just thinking about like what if that was the spiel that we did at the very beginning, like the whole conspiracy thing, and that was the the intro. And that's when we start the podcast. What <laughs> you know. Shoulda, coulda, and woulda. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I don't know. Conspiracies are really fun. They are fun, but some people can delve into them and Too then much. they think and then, everything. Yeah, and then they think every. Well, that goes into the simulation thing. It's like they start believing conspiracies so much that they start believing that every conspiracy is a conspiracy of a conspiracy. And it's just that conspiracies are the la- like the I was the watching, waterfall effect. I was watching a podcast the other day, and these two people watching or listening. Was it, it, was a, a, it was a video podcast. So it was a vodcast. Is, is that what they're called? I don't fucking know. I didn't know if that I was just an actual know, thing. I just know there was a blog that turned into a vlog. So it's like whenever you go into the video medium, it's basically. It's a vodcast. Yeah, you just, add a, you just add a V to the beginning of the word and then all of a sudden that's it. But I was watching a podcast and they were talking about conspiracies. And this one dude was like, there was this guy that just came up to me with like a, like a restaurant menu. And he goes, do you see that? He goes, what do you see? I just see garlic knots. And the dude goes, it's this symbol for something. It's this weird symbol. You just got to look into it. You're not seeing it. You're not looking hard enough. What? Yeah. It's, All I'm thinking I'm just about ta- going just to ta- the fucking Olive Garden and seeing garlic knots on the menu and then seeing the little emblem beside it that's like can be asked for gluten free type deal. And it's just like this little emblem. I feel like Tim Dillon said that. I think he's a comedian. Um, But yeah, no, I was relating that to the fact that, like, some people can just delve too hard in conspiracy theories and they'll literally think anything, like some logo on a menu or yeah, no. fucking... It's just, like, there always has to be, like, symbolism in everything, in a yeah. sense. Yeah, everything has to be, like, some sort of front for something else. Well, I guess what you're really trying to say is, uh, they're just crazy people out there. They're a bunch of fucking crazies. Yeah, and, we'll and we're one on... of them. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we're two of them. We're two of them. Or are we one of them? 
Together maybe, we maybe are this one. Whole, maybe this whole podcast is only one person just changing the, his voice. Let's think about it's that. He's Justin Roiland doing this podcast. Yeah, this is a, a fun fact. We might be talking over each other, but the way that uh, I record this, uh, me, Justin Roiland, is um, I record... Yes, me, Justin Roiland. Yes, exactly. Uh, I record the first half, which is my voice, and then I... I record the I, second half. Yeah, it's all pre-scripted, so I already know what the other person's going to say, and then so I just... So he can do these little overlapping bits. Yeah, so I've just trained my brain to basically read the script in the sense of I'm talking to myself, similar to a Rick and Morty episode. It's exactly. actually where I got the basis for this podcast from. So you can uh, rigor and mortis. Yeah, you can blame the you can blame the rigor and the mortis for this podcast. And with that said, uh, watch my show on Adult Swim. Uh, listen to my podcast Mind Mesh, and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Chayton. I'm Fisher, and we'll see you later. Bye.